Have you ever had one of those days where you look in the mirror and you notice right away that your shirt is on backwards, but you're like, you know, this would take a lot more effort than it's worth. And also I'm not seeing any, anyone today anyway. So why not? Why, why, why bother? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I had one of those today and it's uh, this shirt that I'm wearing actually has like a really big square where <laughs> it's been like embroidered or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, and I saw that and thought that does, that definitely doesn't look right, but um, I've got a headache. I've got a sore throat today. My allergies are killing me. I don't want to, I don't want to invert the shirt uh, sure. here at work. I don't feel like doing it. So that's where I am today. <laughs> Welcome everyone to another thrilling installment of Club Moffat Talks, the first to be recorded in 2022. I'm Chris. And I'm Joe. Joe is going to be, uh, well, he's been in a, a podcast before. Um, can't quite remember what we talked about on that one. We've done so many of these. We 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 did. We were talking about genre. Genre, that's right. And uh, ended up specifically talking about. Did we specifically talk about cyberpunk? Yeah, we started to talk about like the genres of sci-fi, and all we talked about was uh, cyberpunk. And I got so into it, I accidentally closed the window. Yeah, <laughs> that's we, what it we, was. That, yeah, that, that, that's what it was, and we s- s- sadly had a. A lapse of some minutes where there, our conversation was not recorded. Yeah, and, and we started to get really into it too. And then, like, when it started re-recording, uh, like the the conversation had almost completely dwindled out by that point. <laughs> that that, uh, that sounds right. Yeah, we're we're not. Well, actually, you are. Um, you have been in radio before uh, yes. in broadcasting. Uh, I have not. And I'm usually the one who does the recordings on these things. So uh, that's on me. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll muddle through. I'm sure we will. Uh, Ryan's not here today. He also has some allergy problems. So he just said, ah, you two take care of it. Uh, Joe's going to be joining us uh, in perpetuity. It's going to be a, uh, a trio of podcasters now. Yeah. I think that will make things uh, quite interesting, actually. Uh, One of the reasons behind this is actually because um, I think the last time we recorded a podcast, or one of the last times, we had uh, a pretty significant shift in in just our staffing. Like, a lot of people left, a lot of people were pushed up, a lot of people were kind of shifted around. I think the last time we recorded, we were both actually library assistants yeah uh, that's yes and we've we've uh you've actually uh, become two different types of librarian since then yeah yeah um, so i am i'm still instruction librarian i'm also uh taking charge of the media section um i'm still trying to figure out everything that is involved with that because there's a quite a bit actually <laughs> it's it's a lot more nuanced than uh, that i was thinking when i said i'll do it um and Joe, you are now in charge of what I was put in charge of, which is the curriculum materials or, or all the children's books and textbooks and that good stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new adventure. Uh, that's what I call it an adventure. <laughs> certainly. Um, but with that, we've kind of we've kind of changed just some some things about how we operate as a library. And I think that that's kind of necessary when it comes to big organizational shifts like this. Like uh, there are so many new people and new positions and we're all trying to figure out how did, how did the people before us do their part of the job and maybe like, well, what if, you know, I don't like doing it that way. Maybe I'll see how it works. Do it, trying it some other way. Maybe that'll uh, maybe that change will become permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We have to do fairly regular evaluations of, what's going on and and how to make it better if it needs to be made better. Because sometimes, not always, but sometimes the old way works exactly as it should and no change is necessary. But uh, usually things can be tweaked and improved in various ways. Yeah, it just depends on, I think it's, it's better if you've had that kind of experience yourself. Like yeah. if, if it's not quite so lateral, but but more like, like, oh, I'm familiar with this this exact uh, this type of work, and I I know that I 
I'm more comfortable doing it a specific way, whereas the other person might have done it their own way. But it's it actually is a little bit too much of uh, getting used to something new Mm -hmm. when your way is just it's not fundamentally different, but it's different enough that it would probably cause too much of a headache to shift it over to something else. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. So in uh, in changing things, we're still we're still kind of coming off of. Um, well, I mean, there is still a pandemic happening right now. It's March 2022, and theoretically, I think it's happening. But I don't know about you, but I've kind of like I haven't gotten over it. You know that there right. are people who are like, "Ah, oh, I'm over COVID. I'm just gonna keep. Yeah. I'm just gonna go back to living how I was." Not quite that, but more like I got COVID. And um, I didn't die, and now I'm like, uh, I, I, I'm just, I don't know, all that hard work was for nothing, so I might as well just go back to what I was doing. Right, right. Um, yeah, the, I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I very much feel like, and I'm sorry if my math is wrong, but I, I feel like today is like the 800th day of the year 2020. Yeah. And that we're still just trapped in that year and haven't really gotten out of it yet. Yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a gravitational prison. It it feels that way it does. <laughs> it's it, it is a, it's a shame because it's like I've I uh some stuff has happened. I'm ready to to move on with my life and, and try new things or whatever. But uh yeah, it's it just continues, it just keeps happening. Um but then there are so many weird things. It's like, well, uh, the like the year after the pandemic started, uh Texas literally froze. Uh-huh. Um, and then this last year, uh my, oh uh listeners, I kind of am a dad now. <laughs> kind of uh, i kind of have a, a child that i'm responsible for so um that's that's a big change that's happened um oh and you know what i'm i've i've finally decided that i'm sick of going to the movies oh yeah that, like, that was a thing where like all this horrible stuff happened but then at the same time like i could just watch a new movie in my home and i don't have to be around a bunch of people smacking on popcorn and talking and looking at their cell phones yeah being cold yeah in the, in the theater i can just sit in my home and be comfy the yeah, only it's... movie that i didn't do that for was dune which sure anyone who's listened to this podcast for more than an episode or two are probably sick of hearing that word but um <clears throat> that one was different and then i turned around and watched it at home anyway right right yeah. like the king kong and godzilla i watched that at home i i the new Sopranos movie. I watched that at home and then I uh -huh. felt like throwing my remote at my TV. <laughs> but in those terms, it's, uh, we're kind of seeing like, Oh, well, you know, things kind of, we kind of found ways around uh, some of the more inconvenient parts of life. I have a friend who's a, a mathematician. Like he's, he's a, like a coding whiz or whatever. And uh, he is flat out said, I will never work in an office again. Oh, wow. Like he's, he's, getting paid more than he ever has moving jobs. Like he's constantly moving up and, and finding new places to work. And at the point he is now, he's like, I'm making more than enough money to get by. And I don't have to change out of my pajamas. <laughs> All I need is a VPN to access our, our work equipment. And I'm good. I can do everything at home. That's amazing. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of stuff like that. Uh, I have another friend who works uh, for an insurance company, and it's the same for him. It's just like they 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 gave him a work computer to take home, and he, he's just he just stays home. He takes care of his kid and uh, works his normal job. Yeah, and here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Um, but no, actually, things are are quite a bit nicer because now we're seeing some things that we also didn't really we never really thought about like how do we do library stuff at home because when you think of the library you think of the library you think of the building but right. uh, for us especially in public services and even in tech services uh, there are a lot of things that are just 
access through a system. And in public services, there are um, like we do our workshops, but we've started to see that we can just or like instruction or whatever, we can just uh, talk to a class through Zoom or something. And mm -hmm. it's it is virtually the exact same instruction we would give just we don't have to look up and see a bunch of students looking at their phone and think, oh, oh that's right. Uh -huh. We can pretend like that's not happening. Right, right. <laughs> or, 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 or have it be where them looking at their phone is actually part of the class. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're doing good. Now they're, they're figuring out how to, how to view these things on their phone. So they're, yeah. they're double working. That's right. <laughs> oh, what a pipe dream. <laughs> <clears throat> but we, we've seen things like, uh, historically, we've had um, weird attendance with our workshops. Uh, and the way we market them, uh, we we say quite a bit ahead of time. This The, the most recent one we did, we, we couldn't because the ice storm uh, right. completely threw us off. But um, usually we promote it and we say, hey, come to this this room at this specific time. And a lot of people, I think, just don't really especially at a college where their schedules are so busy and they, they're not always going to be at the library. And if they are at the library, they might be actually looking for a book or studying. So that, uh, that impetus to come in and have us teach them something, even though it might be something that they actually need, it might not seem that appealing. Uh, yeah. Where, where now we can say, Hey, we've got, this instruction here's the link to it you can watch us do it over the internet and then we'll um, again theoretically we will have a link to it in perpetuity so you can just come back and, and view our information we tried to do that last year and um zoom did not like us uh streaming to like 15 people imagine imagine so that stuff is is gone like the the internet swallowed it and killed it so um now we're thinking, you know what? We get a lot more people actually coming in, even even with all the uh, the technical difficulties. We still have way more people who are interested in coming in and watching one of our workshops, just just on their phone or something. So uh -huh. these little things, I don't think having the the um, having the view of what was necessary during COVID. I don't think we would have ever even thought of doing something like that. Yeah, but now we are, and it, it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, so uh, just kind of a kind of giving the library a reboot. A reboot. That's correct. Uh, what do you consider uh, to be a good definition of a reboot? Um, just the term itself. Uh, I think it's. Uh, like I, I keep thinking of other re words like revamp or uh, mm. you know, but uh, uh, re remarket, reevaluate, uh, recast is a good one for uh, movies and TV shows. Oh, definitely, yeah. But uh, yeah, I uh, well, and we've seen it with a lot of a lot of different uh, serialized movies uh like the bond movies get regular reboots where they have a new actor in and they don't have the new actor just be like and i'm the same guy i just have a different face inevitably they do the reboot where they start the story over um maybe bond's not a, the best example batman's probably a better example or spider-man where you you don't just continue the story; you actually go back and like redo the origin story, uh, re retell. There's a, there's another re. Um, re and I, uh, I feel like that that tends to be a big part of a, a reboot, a a rebirth, uh, rebirth, sort of kind yes, of, uh, recreation. Yeah, it's mostly yes. a reword that you would associate with a reboot. But yeah, it's almost entirely with movies and TV shows. And what, what's kind of interesting to me with those is the, the concept of the hard reboot and the soft reboot. Okay. Because with a hard reboot, it's something like, like you said, like Bond or like Batman. Like a hard reboot for Batman is going from Tim Burton or Joel Schumacher 
uh, to um to Christopher Nolan. It's a completely different continuity. It's a completely yes. different take on the character. Uh, sometimes it might be just one or two things that are that are different. Sometimes it might be just one or two things that are that are actually the same. Usually with Batman, it's you know it's the the pearl necklace falling on the ground and, right. and a, a thug um, killing his parents in uh, what's the alley called? Crime like, Alley. Crime Alley, right? Yeah, you would think after fifty reboots or whatever, his parents would eventually say, "Let's let's not take the detour through Crime Alley this time." But, uh, I okay. Uh, I I'm I'm not a thousand percent on this, but I think that Crime Alley is what it becomes called. I think that it actually has a different name than that. Oh, so it's Crime Alley in retrospect, whereas right. um, it was called Nice Alley. Yeah, well, you know, or, well, I don't know about you, like what your experience is with street names, <laughs> but I've never seen alleys have names, you know, because no. it's the alley that's like the half block point, you know, it's like between... 9th Street and 10th Street, it's not 9.5 Alley. It's just the alley that's there. Yeah, that's true. It's not, uh, what is it, uh, Platform 9 and 3 quarters? Right. Yeah, that's true. Although that one does have a specific name, but that's that's different. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to, to reboots, you, you're kind of rolling the dice on them. Oh, absolutely. You know, when it, it's, it's like James Bond, it's like, well, we could be getting another... Uh, Here's Brosnan era where it's a good bond, but the movies are kind of silly. Uh-huh. Or you could get another uh, Daniel Craig era where the movies are mostly good and the casting for Bond is really good. Yeah. Um, and I mean, with with Bond, the what makes it difficult to to expand on your point is 007 is a moniker, and I think technically James Bond the name is as well. Um. There are many, there are many 007s, there are many James Bonds, but um, at some point, those movies are completely rebooted, and they don't exactly make it clear when it's a new continuity. Yeah, usually with with the same actors will usually stay in the same Bond continuity, but sometimes like a a new Bond will come in and continue the last one's storyline. Uh huh. That makes it really difficult. It does. Um... I was actually introduced to a term that I had never heard before, but when when I heard it and and they also explained it, uh, I thought it made sense. Uh, I heard requel, which Ooh. is like a, a a combination between a reboot and a sequel. Um, and honestly, I I I kind of feel like that's what they did with the Daniel Craig Bond because um, you have this new actor playing Bond and it seems like it's an origin story for him, but the person that's in charge of his branch, his organization, so Judy Dench, who had been in charge through all the Pierce Brosnan Bonds. So you have some characters that are still the same. And then like this one character that's uh, the, the same character, but has been recast. Um, what makes the, that even more muddy is that they're rebooting it by going back to the original stories of James Bond. Yeah. And they're telling like a through point of uh, what, whatever the villain's name is and like telling, telling stories that are focused around him. So it's more concentrated, uh-huh. but it is going back to the very, very beginning. Yeah. It really that makes it weird. The, the yeah. term that I've heard for, for a requel, which I actually like that name is the soft reboot. Yes. So you have the hard reboot, which is like this, and then there's a soft reboot, which is, um, well, like you've mentioned, it's kind of like the keeping old uh, cast members and kind of retelling the same stories. Yeah. Um, A really good uh, example of that, which became a really bad example of that, is uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Okay. That's a very, I think at this point, it's, it's kind of becoming infamous as a soft reboot where... Um, it is like beat for beat, uh, a new hope, uh-huh. the original star Wars, but with new characters. And then the, the old characters do show up. So it's, it's continuing the continuity. It's still, 
um, the story of Luke Skywalker and, and Darth Vader and all that stuff, but um, it's like a new generation. Uh-huh. Star Trek: The New, The Next Generation. That's also a. I, I guess you could kind of call that a soft reboot because it's the same continuity, but like, who really cares about TOS when it comes to that show? I think their TOS is mentioned like once. Um, well, during the course of Next Generation, you you step into my wheelhouse now, Chris. Yes. Um, <laughs> the, the during the course of the Next Generation, there's actual several references back to the original series. Um, well, in the first, like in the first episode, you have. Uh, a very old Bones McCoy doing a tour of the ship. Oh. Um, in, uh, just a few episodes later on in um, the first season, they have an encounter with uh, the same kind of thing that was from the original series episode, The Naked Now. Um, later on in the series, um, Scotty actually shows up and uh, Spock's in a few episodes and Spock's dad is in an episode or two. So you have, you have multiple cross references and ties back to the original series uh, during Next Generation. And, and something that uh, I was watching, I actually watched an episode of Next Generation recently and I was sort of stunned by how really, really bad the uh, shift to uh, stuntmen was because it was really, really obvious. And I thought, you know what? I think that's actually an homage to the original series because you could always tell that there was a completely different actor as the stunt person. Or you oh, could yeah. like, see the zipper on the monster or whatever. <laughs> it's like, so, so even though, you know, they're spending a million dollars for special effects on each episode of Next Generation, we're going to still have really obvious stunt guys. So, you know, that we're having fun. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I'm admittedly not a big Star Trek person. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that um, it's intimidating. Um, I do remember in the first season where, uh, and this is kind of why I think of it as, as kind of a reboot is uh, in that episode, the naked. Now they say, Oh, um, Hey, there's in the flight log for the enterprise, uh, this exact thing happened and here's how they solved it. Right. Where I've never seen TOS. Uh, no, oh, okay. I, I think I watched the first episode. And um, so I, I have very little knowledge of TOS. I watched the first season of TNG. And it's the what makes the soft reboot kind of more... What makes it kind of an interesting type of storytelling device is that you they really don't expect you to have seen the original. But it's very rewarding if you have. Yes. Um. So speaking of, of very convoluted wheelhouses. Okay. Um, and this also does uh, go into this because it's something that I'm kind of struggling with right now. Um, so I don't, I think it's been a while since, it's been so long since we recorded that I don't think I had a chance to talk about this in the last one. But uh, since last June, I went through the entire Mobile Suit Gundam uh, television program. Okay. Anime. Um, that show started in 1979. Uh-huh. And it's not, I mean, it is a straight continuity if you're looking at the main timeline, which is called Universal Century. Okay. But they've like every few years they'll create a new spin-off that's that's in an alternate universe or an alternate take. And it might borrow a few things, but um, those are intended to be like, hey, you, here's here's what Gundam is kind of like. But if you really want to get into the, the nitty gritty, you're going to have to go back to the 1979 series. Mm-hmm. And every now and then they'll make like a movie compilation that uh, that um, mashes together like 50 episodes of, of one series into like a few movies. Uh huh. Um, and actually, the, I think the best way to watch the original Mobile Suit Gundam is the the, the movie trilogy that's on Netflix. Uh, it cuts down on a lot of 1970s, like, silly cartoon, like, Monster of the Week kind of thing. Okay. Whereas, I mean, Monster of the Week with a show like Gundam is like the... What's the ship called? Um, not the Argama. Oh, crap. Um, 
whatever the ship's called. I can't believe that I forgot it. Um, we're running out of salt, so we better make a detour to uh, to a salt lake so we can go mine some salt real quick so we don't <laughs> die. Right. Uh-huh. And when you watch the movies, it's like, uh, why would we? Ever, why would we even bother? Right. Why would we have a, 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 a dedicated amount of time to this when we only have two hours to, to tell this, however many episodes we're mashing it into? Um, so stuff like that, it's like, well, I could go back and watch 40 years worth of stuff. Or if I'm, I'm like, I, I'm a newbie, I'm just seeing giant robots fighting and it's kind of political or whatever. I'm just going to watch, like, I'm going to grab a random side story and i'm not going to worry about the whole universal century canon because that's a that's 40 years of material that i have to watch so you get the hard reboots with that series but they're still making the originals like they're still making the universal century stuff um i think the most recent one is well actually the most recent one is a film that hasn't been released yet and it is uh it's going to be retelling (laughs) it's retelling an episode that was entirely cut because um the director had to write and storyboard it in the hospital. Oh, wow. So you look at it and uh, it's in, in terms of like the Gundam fandom or whatever, it's kind of infamous because like the, everything's off model, everything looks weird. And the director just said like, you know what? I don't need that one. We, we don't need to have uh, audiences see that one. So they're remaking that as a movie, but <laughs> Like it's still 15 episodes into the first one, so they still kind of want you to have some knowledge of the series going in. Right. Um, there's there's another that I'm like I, I don't know I got into a really big mecha kick recently, um, and two series I, I've told you about these uh, and I told Ryan about them. Two other series that I'm getting into now are um, the 1970s manga Gitter Robo and Mazinger Z. Uh huh. Um, those are mid seventies. And if you, if you ask someone who's, who knows someone who's like a big fan, who's, who's watched and read the entire thing, they'll be like, uh, they'll say like, I don't know, read, um, Mazinger Z and then Shin Mazinger. And then you got to jump over to another one called UFO Robo Grindizer. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to watch, uh, this, this one movie that's a spinoff, but it's also kind of canon. So I, I, I read all that and I said, how do I watch all of Mazinger right now and not worry about all the spinoff crap? And they <laughs> rebooted it just very recently. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, like they take a bunch of elements from the, the manga author's other works and they just mash it together into this like insane uh, blob that still tells the story of the original. So of course I look at that and say, you know what? I don't need, in this case, I don't need 50 years worth of stories to try to appreciate this new one. Right. And Get a Robo is kind of the same way where it's not, it's not that crazy. It's like a a few volumes here and there that have been written sporadically over 50 years. Mm -hmm. But then all of the anime adaptations are complete reboots where they'll be like, uh, this is, this acknowledges the first like the first chapter of the manga and then it goes off and does its own thing entirely so (laughs) in that sense it's a reboot that is entirely different that rewards you if you've read it but it doesn't expect you to have but you know that's kind of the argument i hear a lot with western versus eastern comics Uh western comics um I, I hear people talking about like I want to read Spider-Man. Where do I get into it? <laughs> and people will say, "Well, if you start at the Amazing Spider-Man issue eight hundred and thirty, you read about <laughs> five issues, and then you can actually jump into Ultimate Spider-Man because like it's kind of an alternate tell or like a retelling of it. But actually, Ultimate Spider-Man ends with that universe kind of like merging into the main universe, and then they keep telling the original story." But um, if you didn't read the, the if you didn't read Ultimate Spider-Man, then you're gonna kind of wonder where all these characters are coming from. So it gets kind of weird. So maybe uh, skip ahead a few chapters and or issues or whatever. And uh, I don't know, Batman Court of Owls is good, but it also is a complete reboot. But um, <laughs> you also need to know like how Batman started if you really want to get into it. And like you look at that and your head spins because it's like I don't I don't I don't want to anymore. 
right. don't want to know where all this stuff came from anymore. I've lost all interest in getting into the, these things because it gets hard to find like the starting point for them. At a certain point, you're like, okay, show me the specific volume number I need to buy to start reading this. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I don't know, the collected volume, like 30 or something. And for me, I, I'm 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 very simple. I like to start at number one and I like to end at the end. Sure. But for a manga that's been going on as long as like the getter and whatever, like how in the world am I supposed to find a 50 year old thing at this point? Right. When there are also reboots, but it's the same continuity. Like, you know, it's the same thing with Gundam. Like how, how do you expect me to get into these things? It's like the, the creators of those flat out don't want you to. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I guess, I guess I, I could try. I guess I could find it. I can obtain them on, on the internet somehow. Right. Because I can't buy them. Right. Um, and that, that also makes it, it kind of cheapens the experience too. To okay. me, at least, when you when you have to find them through alternative means because sure. they you literally can't buy them, yeah, um, it's it's just it's it's really weird because then it's you know the reboot works the reboot actually serves its purpose because as a new person coming in, I don't have the time or energy or even the knowledge in this case like I can't read Japanese if, if, even if I wanted to get to buy the originals I couldn't read them. Right. So having them all in one place, like, okay, the reboot has served its purpose because now I'm, I can say that I'm, I'm starting to appreciate what it's going for. Sure. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I've tuckered myself out. I'm sorry. No, no, that's, no, that's fine. Uh, oh wow! Um, yeah, the the comic book industry is is tough, and uh, there there's two things that I feel like are sort of wrong with uh, most comic books, uh, specifically like the DC universe and the Marvel universe, because they both do these two things. One thing is, is that in the comic book world, it is always now, Mm. which is why I I think Marvel said that it's, it's current year plus or minus seven years. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all lies because they have (laughs) the thing where you have comics that have literally been going on for 50 years or more. And those characters in that 50 years have aged maybe, maybe like five years, maybe, maybe 10 years. And that's it. Um, And probably closer to the five. And you also have things like you have like a person who's a veteran of a war. Well, when they had first introduced that character, they were a veteran of World War II. Uh, but you know it's it's happening now. So now they're now they're a veteran of Korea. Oh no, now they're a veteran of Vietnam. It's like oh no, now they're a veteran of you know uh, Afghanistan, because it's like oh we got to keep it up. We got to keep it contemporary instead of just like date stamping them and being like okay this happens you know March twenty seventh nineteen fifty three. And when you have the next episode come out, the next issue come out, it's like, oh, this is the next day. So even though it was a month when you for you to get to this one, this is now, you know, March 28th, uh, 1953, and just keep going like that. So that's one thing with comics, because it really has convoluted the timelines um, and it's just messed up. So that's one thing. But then the other thing is that the people who created the teams and or the characters don't have control of the comics for a very long time. That's one like of my biggest the problems. Maybe the right for like a year or two, but then it gets taken over by someone else. So basically what happens is after the first year or two, you're really dealing with fan fiction. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's, that's my biggest problem with all of it, actually. And, and so you have these drastic rewritings 
reboots of these characters, where sometimes their actual origin even changes um, and their, their uh, powers may change or the strength of their powers will change. Their character will change, um, like just like the kind of person that they are. Uh, their personality will change because it's been taken over by another writer. Uh, and then the next writer will come in and they just sort of like try to take the uh, eraser to that and go, okay, none of that happened. Let's go back to the way it was five years ago and get the character more back to where they used to be. And that just goes back and forth and sometimes makes really wild, um, far ranging from what the character was originally, you know? What really makes that difficult in terms of like just the writers changing is that sometimes they'll get in, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll substitute in someone who is a fan of the original who had their own interpretation of what that character or what that, that theme should be. Uh -huh. So you'll have someone who's, um, you'll have a character who's like in the middle of a drastic character arc. And that gets reversed or changed or or completely rewritten in some way because the new writer. I mean, there there won't be any notes. There can't right. be any notes at that point because, like, can you imagine uh, <laughs> the the closet full of of notes that past writers would have made? Mm -hmm. And it also goes against the idea of these comics as something that's continually evolving. Like, like yeah, like a character will be a veteran, but like. Like Archie, Archie's a veteran, right? Um, but I think after a certain point, because I keep rebooting Archie, it's like it's it's not that he's a veteran of a war; it's that he's a veteran, it, just in general. But that also it, it kind of puts blinders on, like what was the what what happened with that war? Like what what are the ramifications? What uh -huh. what's the the socio political um uh, status of that particular group of veterans right you know like like veterans of vietnam and veterans of world war ii and even veterans of the um the gulf war they're all going through different things oh absolutely so you can't i mean i guess if you're one of these writers you kind of have to just say he's a veteran but you you can't feasibly just say that it's the same thing and expect there to be no like long-term ramifications of what that constitutes. Right. Yeah. 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 That's and that's that's difficult because there's there's no way to get around that part. I mean Stan Lee's obviously not still writing Spider-Man. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but I mean he created all these characters. He created their their outlooks, their initial struggles. Uh I'm not telling anyone to watch this one film i'm not endorsing it but there's a particular <laughs> scene from mall rats uh -huh. by kevin smith um everyone hates mall rats it's one of the only ones for, of his that i like but um there's a scene where um is it jason lee uh jason lee's character um uh, meets stan lee and he and he kind of breaks down his characters where he's like uh dr doom i viewed myself as like uh something happened and i viewed myself as someone who was covering their ugliness with a mask uh -huh. or um yeah you know, it's been so long since i watched that movie but basically his his way of explaining it is these different characters represented something about me happening in my life that i was giving a more fantastical edge but they are rooted in in me as a person and my flaws and my my hopes so then having someone else entirely write that character is like like how could you like how could you possibly continue writing that character from an organic place? Right. Right. Or because I guess they, Ian Fleming just really wanted to be a spy, so how do you keep a <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, that's I I was I was going to try to say something uh, informative or insightful about the real life of Ian Fleming because I've read some stuff about him as as a person uh, beyond his being an author. Uh, but right now, none of those 
bits of fact are, are in my brain. <laughs> it's it's a it's a Tuesday during spring break, so um, yeah. The, so facts are are kind of fast and loose today. Yeah, yeah. But um, th there is something I think possibly insightful that I could say about the whole reboot conversation. Um, going back to Star Wars. Uh huh. Star Wars is like one of the most influential pieces of pop culture in history. So I, I don't think that that's a very controversial statement. Um, but if you look at Star Wars as like what George Lucas intended, it's a it's a samurai film set in space. Okay. And it's it's entirely a I think someone someone once said that uh, postmodernism is all um, pastiche, which means that it's a bunch of different things mashed together. And okay. with Star Wars being a pastiche of all of these, like it's Flash Gordon, it's it's uh, whatever sci-fi things that George Lucas was really into. It's the 50s serials. It's uh, it's the samurai films of Akira Kurosawa, uh -huh. and it really, especially um, especially Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, those films don't feel like an amalgamation they feel like something that is so original that you could believe that it came out of the ether like it just started to exist kind of like lord of the rings as well where you can see that there are bits and pieces of lord of the rings from like um historical fiction and uh fairy tales and everything but it's so original and it has such a defined like authorial voice that it existing in general feels like a new thing, right. but our fantasy today and our sci-fi today, especially our Star Wars derivatives today, they don't feel like something with an authorial voice. It sounds like someone watched Star Wars and they wanted to make their own Star Wars. Hmm. Um, even Gundam's bad about that. You know, I mentioned that I'm getting into Gundam. Uh, guess what? Whenever it comes to whenever the robots have to start fighting face to face, they pull out lightsabers and start hitting each other. <laughs> uh, so even something that's like giant robots in a political drama, even then it's like, oh, well, they got that from Star Wars, obviously. Like, there's no right. way around that idea. Well, yeah, but but then you look at Star Wars being that pastiche yeah. of other things that George Lucas was into at the time. And for sure, you have to look at the uh, samurai movies of like the 60s and 70s. And so, I mean, it's sci-fi, so you make your katana glow, you know? Um, so I, I, I don't know that you can, can, can throw that to being so much influenced by Star Wars. I think that they were going back to the source before Star Wars to, to, to get to that, you know? Sure. Yeah. And then, yeah. And when it comes to myself, whenever I see something that I really enjoy, I do tend to say, I, I want to see where that came from. Sure. I want to see where they got that idea from. And for example, I, I've um, pretty openly said that I'm really uh, fond of the Silent Hill games. That's uh -huh. one of the first experiences I had with psychological horror. So, for example, when looking up like some of their influences, I saw uh, a filmmaker by the name of David Lynch uh -huh. as being one of the big influences, uh, or like Jacob's Ladder, the, a film, and, and all this right. other stuff. Um, some some books like um, Rosemary's Baby. You mm -hmm. know, those are things that I honestly I've never I've never read Rosemary's Baby. I have a copy of it at home. I've never seen the movie. I, I had not watched David Lynch films before that. And in watching those, I was like, these are like, I see where the influence came from, but there's so much more here than just being an influence on something I like. Like it's something that also that made its mark on culture being what it is. Right. So yeah, I do. I do see that. And maybe it's just because, Maybe it's just because I turn on my TV and I see like a, pre a preview for a Marvel show and then I see a preview for a Star Wars show and it's just one thing after another and I, like my eyes glaze over because I, I didn't watch the Boba Fett and I didn't uh -huh. watch, I haven't watched a Marvel movie since Avengers 1 
so when I see that that brand name pop up, I'm like, oh, it's another one of these that I there's no way I'm gonna get to anymore. Wow. <laughs> like there's um I've got too much giant robots on my plate to watch another Star <laughs> Wars, right? Um we'll 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 have to make some sort of a deal where where I'll watch your giant robots if you watch my Marvel. <laughs> Actually, no, like I said, I have a I have a two month old now, so there's no way I'm gonna escape it. <laughs> I've escaped it for this long, and there's no way that'll happen anymore. <laughs> I did put on Harry Potter for her the other day. I put on actually a few movies every now and then I'll I'll be <laughs> my my father in law came over and I was playing this this new hit game called uh Elden Ring. Uh-huh which um, is apparently the biggest thing of all time somehow. Sure. It's nice when the things that I like are get like become big because I can finally have someone to talk to about it. But um, <laughs> cause all my, all my, uh, uh, all my like discord friends or whatever, they're all, they're all playing it too. And I'm just like, damn, like, wow, I'm, I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to this many people about this one thing in years. Um, but uh, what was I saying? <laughs> there we go there we go uh now i've now i've officially talked myself out of out of ideas um i was playing through elden ring and my my father-in-law was over and he said don't you think the don't you think that maybe you need to put something on for ezra that like might be educational or something and i told him she's two months old she sees lights and sounds coming off of the tv and he says, yeah, but it might scare her with all the blood and guts and carrying on. And I told him, well, when she can start saying, I don't like the blood and guts and carrying on, I'll turn it off. Um, so now I'm thinking, well, maybe maybe, maybe every now and then I should. So, so um, the other day we put on, um, I'm also trying to watch through Harry Potter with my mom because she just, she, she won't pay attention to things that have like a certain level of like complexity to them okay and i know harry potter's not i mean it's it's still like as far as children's lit goes it still can be pretty pretty complicated sometimes um maybe not the movies because the movies cut out a lot of the fluff yeah but i i started to watch those like and and i started to watch uh um my neighbor totoro the other day because i i actually had never seen it and i was like yeah let's put on something cute for the baby um so I'm slowly beginning to to let go of my TV time uh-huh. for watching stuff with the baby. Sure. My my wife not so much. She just she just found uh okay, wait, not 90 day fiance. She found that a year ago. She just yeah. found Teen Mom. Um, oh wow. I don't understand the the appeal, but I'm not going to I'm not going to say don't watch that, but there is an awful lot of yelling in, in sure. Teen Mom. So, yeah, I think at a certain point we're both going to just have to say, all right, baby's in the room, it's, it's baby time stuff. And when she gets a little older, then I'm going to assume Mar- Marvel movies are still going to be happening. Uh, probably so, yes. <laughs> they have no incentive to stop them now. No. Um, no. So I did just trap you into agreeing to, to, uh, to a giant robot because eventually i am going to probably have to watch all of these marvel movies in a row uh yes <laughs> although i might steer you away from a couple <laughs> uh i'm betting you that i probably watched the worst ones already i've watched the first thor and i've watched most of the first hulk okay and from are what you... i understand those are like the bottom of the barrel for for new marvel for disney marvel yeah, I, I particularly am not a fan of the first Thor movie. Um, I also, and again, just personal opinion, no, please don't stone us or <laughs> me. Um, I'm not a fan of the second Iron Man movie. No one is. That, that but, uh, but most of the others are decent. They I, really are. I, I very strongly remember people, people talking about how Iron Man 2 killed their franchise. Uh, it was yeah, like Marvel, well, we, Marvel's we done. It is. So yeah, yeah. It was like Marvel's done. They made like two good movies, and then now they're making Iron Man two. So it's all downhill from here. 
Yeah. And and they they persisted. They they had enough money uh, and, and enough ideas going forward that like Captain America was a thing. And yeah. I'm pretty sure well, by that time Captain America had come out. And um, yeah, Thor didn't do too great, but um, I think I think this like that type of superhero movie was so new that people kind of liked the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, it's the it's Iron Man, but you know, it's a different take on it and it's whatever. Uh, which from what I understand now, that first Hulk is basically um uh, retconned. Yeah. It, yeah. it uh kind of, yeah. Uh because there are uh, there are characters this goes into the whole reboot thing too, because there are <laughs> characters from that uh that were included in later movies. Oh so yeah. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. But like I said, I watched the Avengers in theaters, and I remember I felt full after I left the, after I left the movie. Uh-huh. I remember feeling like I had had a really big Italian lunch. <laughs> you know, like I, I ate a bunch of pasta. I had like too much bread. Um, I might have had like a, a glass of wine here or there, and I got in sure. my car and was like, I can't imagine eating ever again. And of course, I was I was hungry at dinner. I uh-huh. I, I ate something else for dinner, and it, it was it was whatever. But at that moment, leaving the theater for the Avengers, that's exactly how I felt. Like I'm never going to watch a movie again. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. But now, I mean, I see the stuff now, and like, there's that there's that uh, scene that's like kind of viral or whatever. It's like all the Marvel characters coming out of a portal or whatever, and it's like a billion actors all on set at once and like there's fire everywhere and like the galaxy in the background yeah and i look at that and i'm like oh my god i i didn't realize that it could it could get so much bigger yeah 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 well and it's that thing where it's like you know talking about oh it's all downhill from here except they didn't know that it was a roller coaster and that whole downhill thing was just to get the momentum and speed, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, of course. Uh, and, and a lot of a lot of like movie reboots and stuff do begin as like slower takes, or it'll be like a like a smaller scale, just to get that interest in. And if there are enough people who are interested in the small scale, then by the time we start getting the <laughs> by the time we start getting the universe sized giant robots. <laughs> That's when people will say, okay, you know what? When it was when it was a person just walking around talking to people, like, yeah, there it was it was worth that build up. Right, right. Yeah. I, oh. I guess I guess that's the point. Yeah. That's yeah, that is, yeah. The, uh, and and it is rewarding seeing things build from that from the small scale to that that kind of large scale. Cool. Well, Joe. Yes. That that uh thirty second pause tells me that uh <laughs> we're both probably um probably all rebooted out. Yeah, uh, I, I I I think for for this one, yes. Yeah, and and uh, we you know ironically we do continue to reboot this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some truth to that. Um, like every now and then we do come back to it, and I think there's a. Um, I think there's there's kind of a virtue to taking a break and, and letting letting this thing kind of like simmer down a little bit and then coming back and we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Because it's not like we have a lot to say about like this is what's going on in the library right now. Um we do have like guests and stuff on, but um much like much like the library, there are lulls where we're just trying to kind of rejuvenate ourselves and we're trying to get stuff in the background done so we can come back all energized and better than ever yeah that, that that's the plan that's the plan so i'm gonna say that we uh we call it yeah to say we uh we did a good one this time well, that, next that, time that's ryan will say. probably be on unless uh his allergies uh also render him um unable to speak i'm surprised that i talked as long as i did <laughs> you did well you did thank well. you uh yeah i'm i i'm gonna have to go to sleep now i think (laughs) okay well get some rest 
Thank you for joining me, Joe. It's going to be exciting to get all this stuff, uh, get all this stuff done here here in the future. I yeah, I think it will be. I'm awesome. glad I'm here for the ride. Yeah, that's that's certainly what I call it a ride. All right, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, give us some feedback if you would like to. We would certainly like to hear from you. And um, I've been Chris. This has been Joe. Yep. Club Moffat Talks. Uh, glad to have you on board. And we will all talk to you all later. See you.